earlier, you said, and I quote, that offshore wind has breathed life back into East Anglia. I thought it was a really interesting idea. Can you expand on that? Yeah, in Yarmouth and Lower Stoft, um, it's really showing the positive signs of the investment from offshore wind. Um, the supply chain is growing. Um, the supply chain is extending, obviously, from the innovation companies that are investing in and relocating there. Um, it's, it's having an effect on the hospitality region, the taxi drivers, the restaurants. Um, and also, it's visibly, the, the investment is visible in the development of the ports and um, of the fabrication uh, going on. Oh, sorry. Fabrication going on down at the ports. Um, I drive into work every day from Norwich along the April Strait towards Great Yarmouth and the skyline has completely changed and you can see the investment with the turbine towers being put together in the outer harbour um, and the development in both ports in Great Yarmouth and Lower Stockton. That's wonderful to hear. Um, we also spoke about the skills gap though and um, the perceived lack of opportunities for young people in particular in, in those kind of communities. I mean, it seems to me that the two things you've just described, you know, a, re a really kind of burgeoning industry and, and, and there's also a perceived skills gap. So I don't understand. Surely those things should partly cancel each other out at least. So what do you think could be done to bridge the gap? Um, there has been a skills gap. I think both Yarmouth and Lowestoft have lost traditional industries of fishing, food processing and boat building. Um, and offshore, offshore wind and the investment in that is beginning to fill that gap. And I think with the pipeline of work that's there off the coast, um, the pipeline of jobs is coming there. So what's happening is the industry is, work, uh, work, is working with the colleges um, to produce solutions to skill young people and retrain people who are unemployed. So last year, um, Three Sun Group led employers um, with an investment from the LEP to set up the offshore wind skill centre. It's called the East of England Offshore Wind Skill Centre which is based at the Great Yarmouth campus of East Coast College. So that's got, um, that has two different courses, one three week course which is a transition course for people who have got engineering skills and who are unemployed and a 12 week course for people who are unemployed and have no engineering skills. And last week I was speaking to a young woman, a 19 year old, um, who wanted a career um, hadn't done well at school, wanted a career that, you know, that was a skilled career. So she'd gone into motor mechanics, done two years of learning to be a motor mechanic, had heard about offshore wind, um, applied for the course and is doing amazingly well and, and said, you know, she can see now that she has got a career to last for the next however many decades, whereas her friends who are not doing that are unemployed and are having a really bad time getting knocked back. So I think that was really tangible to see that she'd seen the opportunity, jumped in there, was getting this course, which is worth five and a half thousand pounds of free training, and then hopefully she'll walk into a job. You know, Three Sun has um, employed 16 of the first cohort, first three cohorts, um, which is amazing. So the, you know, the, 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 there is a, an obvious pipeline of work. You go, you get your skills, and then you go into work. Also, um, East Coast College is opening the Energy Coast Training Academy, which is an £11.3 million energy skills centre at Lower Stoft. Um, and the Skills for Energy, if, if, with Eager to, we're working with employee, if employers to, um, to uh, well, set up various schemes, really, and finding out what skills are needed and providing those skills within college. Thank you very much.